Welcome to WHHI News. I'm Allie McNair, and here's a look at your headlines. The longtime boyfriend of Hilton Head Island resident Brenda Carmen, whose skeletal remains were found in Bluffton this week, has killed himself. Brenda Carmen's death had been ruled a homicide. According to the Buford County Sheriff's Office, quote, investigators have been working diligently towards the arrest of her longtime boyfriend, Michael Wilson. Although not publicly named, Wilson was the sole person of interest in this investigation, end quote. Authorities say they were called to Wilson's Indigo Run home Thursday for a suicide attempt. After life-saving efforts were performed by emergency services personnel, 66-year-old Michael Wilson was pronounced dead at his home. Well, a woman whose identity had been a mystery ever since her body was found 27 years ago in the embassy has now been identified thanks to advancements in DNA. The Buford County Sheriff's Office says the woman, who had been known as the Buford County Jane Doe, is Maria Tellis Gonzalez of Kissimmee, Florida. In May of 1995, Gonzalez's body was found in a ditch on Cotton Hall Road off Interstate 95. Her cause of death was strangulation. In 2020, Gonzalez's DNA was submitted to a lab and then sent to Ancestry databases where possible matches for relatives could be found. A volunteer with Buford County's cold case investigations team contacted some of Gonzalez's possible relatives and located her son. Authorities say the investigation into her murder is ongoing. Well, for the first time ever, Buford High School's football team has brought home the championship trophy. On Thursday night, the Eagles defeated Powdersville in the Class 3A championship. The final score was 41 to 31, and WHHI's Justin Jarrett will have all the details coming up shortly in Loco Sports. House Democrats unanimously chose Representative James Clyburn of South Carolina for a new role on Thursday. He'll be the House Democrats' assistant leader. Clyburn is the highest ranking black American in Congress and is close to President Joe Biden. Speaker Nancy Pelosi and her team are stepping aside after decades at the helm. Clyburn, a civil rights leader, says he plans to continue his work advocating, quote, for the South and for communities that have been left out of the economic progress of previous generations, end quote. The Buford Jasper Economic Opportunity Commission wants residents who live in those two counties to know that they're offering assistance for people who are struggling to pay water bills as well as other utility bills. If you need help, you can contact the Buford Jasper Economic Opportunity Commission to see if you qualify at this number, 843-255-7220, or visit their website at thebjeoc.org. Three people and more than 40 animals have been exposed to a rabid cow in South Carolina. According to the State Department of Health and Environmental Control, the calf was sent for testing last Saturday, and this week, lab results confirmed that the animal had rabies. The calf was located in Seneca, not far from Lake Hartwell and the Savannah River. Health officials say that the three people exposed to the calf were told to seek medical care. In addition to those people, 22 cows and 21 calves in the same pasture were potentially exposed to the deadly virus. Well, the Charleston Animal Society is breathing a sigh of relief now that Piggy Stardust, a 30-pound pot-bellied pig, has been safely returned to the animal shelter. North Charleston police were told of the pig's disappearance back on November 26. According to authorities, someone had removed the bolts off a fence at the back of the property and had taken off with a gray and white pig. Police say 30-year-old William Panisitz of North Charleston has been charged with second-degree burglary after confessing to stealing Piggy Stardust and having the pig in his possession. Now, before she was taken in by the animal shelter, Piggy Stardust lived behind the Home Depot in Charleston. For details on these stories and more, be sure to check the news sources on your screen and look for us too on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Finally, if you have a story idea for us, please email us at news at whhitv.com. And now it's time for a look at sports. It's a big one this time with that win by Buford High. Here's Justin Jarrett. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by locosports.com. And it's time to celebrate like it's 1945, because that was the last time a high school public school football team from Buford County won a state championship, until last night. After falling behind by two touchdowns in the first quarter, the Buford Eagles rode stars Casey Fields and Colton Ferris all night long, literally. The senior duo combined for more than 400 rushing yards and five touchdowns, and Fields added a 93-yard kickoff return score to power the Eagles to a 41-31 win 
over the Powdersville Patriots to capture the Class 3A state championship. Buford trailed 24-21 at halftime, but the defense adjusted at the break and slowed down Virginia Tech commit Thomas Williams, and Buford sources took care of the rest. Fields rushed 37 times for 219 yards and three TDs along with the electrifying kick return, and Ferris added 198 yards and two scores on 28 carries along with seven tackles on defense, all while playing through injury. The duo accounted for all but seven of Buford's 424 total yards, which the Eagles amassed without attempting a pass thanks to a dominant effort from the offensive line. The win cements this team's status as one of the best to come through the loco and sends a special group of 22 seniors out on a historic note for Buford and for the loco. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go loco. Great, Justin, thanks so much. Maria has our weather forecast. Maria? Thanks, Ali. Yep, so taking a look ahead, it does look like we're gonna have some really nice weather this weekend for all the tree lightings and parades that are happening. So taking a look at Saturday, it's gonna be partly cloudy with Hill Knight having a high of 73, a low of 59. Lufthansa's gonna have a high of 75, a low of 56. And Buford's gonna have a high of 75 and a low of 57. Come Sunday, it's going to be partly cloudy and much cooler, with Hillnet having a high of 65, a low of 57. Bluffins have a high of 66, a low of 56. And Beaufort's going to have a high of 66 and a low of 55. The sunrise for this weekend is going to be at 7.08 and sunset is going to be at 5.18. Taking a look at the beach tides, Saturday low tide is going to be at 12.25 p.m. High tide is going to be at 5.41 p.m. So on Sunday, it's going to be low tide is going to be at 1.17 p.m. And high tide is going to be at 6.37 p.m. Taking a look into next week, Monday it's going to be cloudy with highs in the 60s and lows in the 50s. Come Tuesday it's going to be partly cloudy with highs in the 70s and lows in the 50s. And then come Wednesday it's going to be sunny and humid with highs in the 70s and lows in the upper 50s. That's it for today. Let's sit it back to the desk. Thanks, Maria. When we come back, we'll let you know about a unique place where you can do some holiday shopping. And when you're buying those gifts, the organization will be giving back to others. Stay right there.